dear brothers and sisters we are on the second day of the novena to mary help of christians let us begin our novena service with a prayer prayer that is taken actually from the gospel of luke mary's magnificat and mary said my soul magnifies the lord my spirit rejoices in god my savior for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant surely from now on all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name his mercy is from those who fear him from generation to generation he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich of empty away he has helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy <clears throat> according to the promise he made to our ancestors to abraham and to his sons for ever glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was at the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen heavenly father we thank you for bringing us together under the maternal care of our blessed mother the mother of jesus your daughter today we want to reflect about her humility mary the mother of humility may we understand this virtue and live it in our lives with her in the session and your assistance we ask this through christ our lord amen <coughs> brothers and sisters today we would like to reflect on the humility of our blessed mother and we shall reflect uh, base our reflection on this beautiful hymn that many of us know by heart and those of us who pray the vespers we say it every day in the evening the magnificat it is mary's hymn it is the self portrait of mary herself it is a picture that she draws about herself in this canticle what does mary do she praises the marvelous power of god that has been made manifest in her conception of this child jesus she perceives herself as the first to recipient of salvation that is poured upon the world with the event of her conception God is my savior she knows she acknowledges the total gratuity of God's generosity seeing her a lowly handmaid that is where our focus shall be she calls herself lowly handmaid handmaid a servant a slave lowly one who is the last yet she knows she understands she recognizes that god in his might has done great things for her and mary predicts that because of that because of on one hand her humility which made her receptive for the great things that god will do in her life all generations would call her blessed with an emphasis on what god has done for her mary is god's child and she replies to god the father as a child with confidence and love as she her considers herself a lowly handmaid a servant a slave that is in her own eyes she is last of all she is a slave of course many of us have a negative picture understanding of the term slave it is something not good at all yet christian vocabulary used this term slave uh, 
a servant. Jesus himself in Luke, in uh, Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, he is called a slave. Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God. He, a thing to be clinged on to, he emptied himself and became a servant, a slave. A doulos, a slave in Greek is doulos. So Mary manifests her humility in obedience to God's plan. And how does she do that? She is someone who seeks nothing for herself. She is wholly concerned about doing the will of his father, for, of her father at all times. She accepts whatever be the will of God. She was betrothed to Joseph, yet now she understands that God is changing her dreams. And uh, she accepts it as the most precious thing. Uh, and she accepts with joy and eagerness that joy is visible, manifest in this hymn. My soul exalts, magnifies, rejoices. Like Jesus, Mary considers that the will of God is her food. You remember Jesus saying, my food is to do the will of my father. And I am sure Mary, who was a beloved daughter of the father, who had grown up according to tradition in the temple of Jerusalem for some years, and therefore she had grown in that closeness to God who dwells in that temple, God who was her father, and uh, she might have told her, him many times, here I am, Lord, I am here to do your will. I am a servant, a slave of the Lord. I deserve nothing. I only hunger and thirst for your righteousness. I only hunger and thirst to do your holy will. And notice something important here. She, as she wants to do God's will, does not ask God why this will and not something else. Or ask God to tell her what is going to happen to her in her future life. She simply trusts. She simply trusts. You remember Jesus telling his disciples before his parting from this world, I no longer call you slaves. Because a slave does not know what the master is doing. Uh, that is, a slave does not know the master's plans. A servant does not know the master's plans. And accept this fact of not knowing the master's plans. And Mary is saying, I am a servant, a slave, meaning I don't know what his plans are, the details of his plans, but I know he is a good father, I accept his plans, not knowing how, when, where this will be accomplished. She only asked that which was indispensable for the realization of the intention of the Lord. Uh, how is that possible for me? And then she surrenders to God's will. Let it happen to me according to that word. And in that act of obedience, Mary shows herself as a humble person. You know that. Humble people are obedient people. Humble people obey God first and foremost in their lives. Humble people obey those who take the place of God in their lives, whether it be the parents or whether it be the church or whether it be the elders, whoever represents God in their lives, they would certainly obey. Why? Because they are humble. That is the first mark of humility. Someone who is eager to do God's will. Now, what is the second mark of humility? And that we see in her uh, journey towards Ain Karam, towards that hill country of Judea. For what? For to assist her cousin Elizabeth. When she was told that her cousin Elizabeth, who was advanced in her age, was pregnant, she immediately knew that she would require assistance, help. And so what does she do? She 
begins a long journey quickly. I suppose Joseph was there. That 140-50 kilometers to uh, that journey to the hill country of Judea, or today we know that exact place in Ain Karam, very close to Jerusalem. And there she serves her cousin Elizabeth for another six or seven months. That is the beauty of this woman. People who are humble serve others, especially those who are weak, those who are poor, those who need assistance. They are eager to assist, to serve. Beautiful manifestation of humility. Proud people, on the other hand, want to be served, but humble people serve others. Remember Jesus saying, I am among you, as a servant, I am among you to serve. I am among you to serve. If I, your master and Lord, wash to your feet, you must also do the same. Mary was humble precisely because he was overtaken by the desire to serve others. Until today, Mary is a servant. We know how she served. The couple, the marriage party at Cana in Galilee by intervening, and we know how she continues to serve in the life of the disciple, in the life of the church. The third thing that we need to notice that Mary's sinlessness, she was without any sin, we call her immaculate and whole holy, etc. Why? Because she was humble. The Blessed Virgin Mary, though uh, was free from every sin, but her freedom from sin was certainly a grace of God, but also the fruit of her cooperation with the grace of God. And what did her cooperation consist of? Her cooperation consisted, above all, in remaining dependent, remaining humble in front of the Lord. Freedom from sins does not mean freedom from temptations. So just as Adam and Eve sinned, Mary also could have sinned, since she was fully free like our first parents. If so, what helped her to remain free from sin was her lowliness, her humility. She was perfectly lowly, humble, dependent on God, trust in God, and concerned only in doing God's will at all times. Very different from Adam and Eve, who, though they were like Mary, sinless when they were created, uh, holy like Mary, yet when the temptation came, they became proud. They wanted to be like God. They wanted to free themselves from God. They wanted to do their will rather than God's will. And they felt Mary, Mary is diametrically opposite of the first parents. Dear brothers and sisters, someone who is truly humble knows that there is no sin in all certainty that uh, she could not commit. Uh, there is no sin. You might have heard this saying, sometimes attributed to Saint Philip Neri, when he saw prisoners or drunkards or uh, people who were caught by the police, etc., being led away. He would say, there go I, but for the grace of God. What he was saying is, I would be in that place of the criminal. I would be in that place of the drunkard. I would be in the place of the addict. I would be in the place of that prostitute if it were not for the grace of God. There go I, but for the grace of God. That is humility. It is acknowledging that only God's grace keeps us from experiencing the deepest, ugliest sin and scandal. And that is what Mary experienced. Uh, she experienced freedom from all sorts of sin because of grace coupled with her humility. While God scorns the proud and shows favor to the humble, this we know from Proverbs, from the book of Job, Mary, uh, God showed for favor 
to Mary, he looked on her lowliness, on her humility. Another manifestation of Mary's humility was her discreetness. Mary was a very discreet woman, quiet woman. We have proof of this in the Gospel. We do not see her as talkative or full of presumption, no. Once she stood at the door, not forcing herself into the disciples' group, wishing to speak to her son and send a word, please tell my son I want to speak to him. And she did not use her maternal authority either to interrupt Jesus' preaching or to enter the house forcefully where he was preaching, according to Mark chapter 3, verse 31. If I remember correctly, the evangelists only allowed Mary's words to be heard four times in the Gospels that they wrote. First, when she addressed the angel, How is that possible for me? I do not know man. And this was only in answer to what the angel told him. Secondly, during her visit to Elizabeth, when, having been praised by her cousin, Mary, in turn, praised the Lord with great vigor, with great joy, the passage that we read at the beginning of our reflection. Third, when she complained to her son at the age of twelve, when she said, Your father and I were looking for you anxiously. Why did you do this to us? That was the third. And the fourth, at the wedding at Cana, when she intervened with her son and said, They have no wine to the son. And then to the servant she said, Do whatever he tells you. On all other occasions, Mary showed herself slow to speak, quick to listen, for she kept all these things, according to the scriptures, reflecting on them in her heart. She had a contemplative, meditative heart. Nowhere will you find that she spoke out, not even about the mystery of incarnation or anything else during her life. The Gospels are totally silent about anything else Mary said. How many times, for instance, Mary heard her son, not only speaking in parables to the crowd, but in private, revealing to the disciples the secret of the kingdom of heaven. She saw him working miracles. She saw him hanging on the cross. She saw him dying, rising, ascending to heaven. But she kept all these things in her heart. She was silent. She was discreet. The greater Mary is, the more she humbles himself not just in all things, but more than all things. Uh, She is truly humble. And this could uh, lead us to this question, what is humility after all? We said so many things about Mary's humility, the characteristic. What is humility? Now, it is not easy to define humility, grasp humility, because humility hides. Uh, but there is one author whom I appreciate very much, Father Kantala Mesa, who spoke of humility as truth. He says, humility is accepting the truth about ourselves, about our situation, about, about our condition, and about our world. What is the truth about us? The first truth about us is that we are creatures. The word human comes from the Latin humus, which means soil, dust. Remember on Ash Wednesday we are told, Remember man, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We are creatures. We are finite beings. We are dependent on others from childhood. We are dependent on God himself, on our existence, on our breathing. And we are dependent on many other factors in our life. And that is the first truth. We are creatures. And connected to that truth is that we are sinners. If it were not for the grace of God, I would have fallen. So, we are sinners. That is the truth. We are sinners. St. Paul says in Romans, All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. That is our condition. Our, there are passions within us, sinful passions. Our intellect 
is blinded many times. Our will uh, moves towards what is easy, what is sinful, what is pleasurable. Our senses run after the pleasures. So there are a lot of sins, our sinful movements within us. That is the second truth. The third truth about us is even the good that we have, it is there because of the grace of God. It is a grace of God that makes us good. It is God that helps us to cultivate virtues, which who makes us Christ-like. When we were created, we were created good by God. God is the one who gives us natural goodness and supernatural goodness, and they are attributable to God. Instead, pride is opposed to humility. What is pride? It is a presumption of the mind and the ambition of the will. The mind thinks we are great, we are the center of the world, and the will wants to acquire, to be great, to sit over other people. So, because of this, we might perceive ourselves as great singers, or athletes, or writers, or doctors, or and even become jealous of those who attain loftier positions, or, or who receive more praises than we do. Even priests and religious have aspired to lofty positions, not because of grace, but rather because of their own vanity, their own vain desires. Many times pride steps into our life and drives us to do things that may lead to impatience, criticism of others, gossiping, backbiting, and many other sinful things. None of it is part of the truth. The decisive concept which St. Paul introduces into the discourse on humility is the concept of truth. God loves a humble person because a humble person possess the truth that he is a creature, he is a son or daughter of God, he is a sinner if it were not for the grace of God, and all the good that he has is a gift. That person is true. He knows that he is sinner, and he knows all the good in him is purely great. grace. God, as you know, punishes the proud. Because pride, be, before being arrogance, is a lie, is untruth. We are urged to humility, both by the good, attributing it to God, and the evil that we discover in ourselves. Good is due to the grace of God at work in us, while all evil in me is a manifestation of my pride and my false self-love. At this moment, let me remind you of some of the beautiful verses, sayings of Jesus in his letters. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3 and verse 16, he asks, I bid everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with a sober judgment. What is this sober judgment? Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. So each one of us must think of ourselves with sober judgment. We must think of ourselves as the last. We must associate with the humble, the lowly. He is saying that a man is wise when he is humble, and he is humble when he is wise. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, he says, What have you that you did not receive? What have you that you did not receive? Uh, if then you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? A beautiful question. Why do you boast if you think it is not, It is if you know it is a gift, what are you boasting about? In Galatians, he says, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Galatians 6.3. In Philippians 2.3 says, count others better than yourself. Humility lies, he's saying, precisely in the discovery that we are radically proud. Count others, therefore, better than yourself. So it is good that is in us, and not so much the evil that is the preferred breeding ground of this terrible virus, more dangerous than the COVID-19 virus of pride. 
when we are doing well, when things are going well for us, whether materially or in uh, relationships or in spiritual life, we must be extremely careful for the, pri the virus of pride can hit us, attack us and destroy our being, our life, our spiritual life. And here are some of the ways in which we God helps us to practice humility by making us undergo humiliations. For instance, the humiliations that come, uh, come to us when we have to give up certain positions, certain things that we own. So the willingness to move on, to hand over our positions to the next generation, parents to their children, educators to when the students when they become educators, to move on. Let others take your place. Another one, being disposed to renounce without hesitation anything that God asks for, including the function and obligations of being parents. Like the children, when they grow into adulthood, they will leave you. Accept that. Let the children go. We must be like Abraham, willing to give up the most precious when God wants it from us, even if it is like I, uh, who Isaac for Abraham, the most precious thing. And God will ask us, and, uh, when we are old or one day, God will ask us to give him our life, move on from this world, and we must give him our life, give it back to him because we receive it from him. And there are many things. So God trains us to be like Abraham by training us to give up many things. Or by letting, uh, uh, what you call, by not earning for positions, powers, because we recognize that they are not going to last. And have a desire to remain hidden and notice, especially when we are doing good. Jesus said, let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. Cultivate that habit, not of exhibiting what you do, but doing things in a hidden, unnoticed way, all for the greater glory of God. You will see how God trains you. And when people criticize you or does not take notice of what you did, etc., wonderful. Those are good occasions to practice humility. Jesus asked us to learn from him, for he is meek and humble of heart. Think of that. God himself, humbling himself and took our human form, the form of a slave. And now he is with us in the humble form of bread and wine. So God presents himself to us in humility. Humility. Similarly, Mary, the most beautiful, blessed and grace lady, he presents herself to us as a humble lady. Humble lady, she is able to cry out, The Lord has looked on the loneliness of his handmaid. Humbleness of his handmaid. And for that reason, all generations will call her blessed. Let us yearn to become more and more humble. And you will see God will work wonderful things in you, similar to as he worked in our blessed mother. But remain close to her and ask her to teach you to be humble. Mother, most humble, mother of humility, pray for us. We have come to that moment now. We say the novena to Mary, help of Christians. And the first part of the novena is to Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. To Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. And we pray together. O most sweet Jesus, you place your delights in being with the children of men and being the food of their souls. Grant, we beseech you, that through the merits of St. Francis de Sales and St. John Bosco and many other saints who did so much to spread true devotion of the love of God in the Holy Eucharist and genuine love of neighbor through a virtuous life, we, your children, through the intercession of Holy Virgin Mary, help of Christians, humbly pray for this special grace. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed and praised every moment be the most holy and divine sacrament. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed and praised every moment, be the most holy and divine sacrament. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed and praised every moment, be the most holy and divine sacrament. To Mary, help of Christians. O most holy virgin, help of Christians, you worked and continue to work so many wonders through St. Francis de Sales, Sir Archangels Michael and Gabriel, and our guardian angels. Grant that through your goodness and through their merits, we poor sinners may receive the special grace for which we pray with all the fervor of our souls. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this well of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Amen.
to St. Francis de Sales and St. John Bosco. St. Francis de Sales and St. John Bosco, offer our prayers to Jesus and Mary. Grant the graces we ask for through your intercessions and obtain for us an ever-increasing love for Jesus in the most holy sacrament and the Holy Virgin Mary, help of Christians. Amen. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. St. Jane de Chantal, pray for us. St. Rita, pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray for us. St. Michael and St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, uh, say our guardian angels, pray for us. All our heavenly protectors, pray for us. Now I give you the blessings of Mary, help of Christians. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. O Holy, O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who by the cooperation of the Holy Spirit did prepare the body and soul of the glorious Virgin Mother Mary to become a worthy dwelling for your Son. Grant that as we rejoice in her commemoration, we may, by her loving intercession, be delivered from present evils and from everlasting death through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh.